And more trouble at Mill. I mean, for four months now, there's been a go-slow industrial action at our ports that's held up cargo and cost the country an estimated $84 million a week. And this dispute could now go nuclear because the Maritime Workers Union, they're at war with DP World, which handles 40% of the cargo going through our ports. And this union is demanding a 16% pay rise for workers over two years. Isn't that great work if you can get it? Uh, they want that so they get paid around what workers with the other big operator, Patrick's, already get. DP World says it can't afford that and has said it will now dock workers' pay if they don't do, the, do their job. And the opposition is calling on the government to finally step in before this really gets out of hand. There's been plenty of energy from the Albanese government when it's come to ramming through the parliament increased union-friendly industrial relations laws. They've been happy to give unions greater powers since they've been in government. But why are they unwilling to use government powers to try to bring to an end an industrial dispute, a strike uh, that is going to cost our economy and cost Australians deeply? Joining me is the Executive Vice President of DP World Oceania, Nikolai Nurs. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. The union says your workers should get paid as much as workers at Patrick's. Is that fair enough? Well, first of all, thanks for having me, Andrew. And um, I think everyone should be paid, paid fairly. Um, I, I think when we set salaries, we don't just cherry pick from wherever industry or wherever competitors say, this is, these are the terms I want to cherry pick. Um, I, I, Personally, I would like to be able to pick the conditions of all of my peers as well, but that's not how it works, and it's not how it should work either. Um, in, in specific, um, for our organizations versus some of our competitors, um, some of our competitors have decided to move ahead with the automation of, the, of their operation, which I would speculate means that they have a higher productivity as well in their operations, which potentially allow them to pay higher salaries. That, but that, that is you know, really speculation from my side. How is this fight, meanwhile, hurting Australians? I know, and I think that that, that is, you know, a, a big part of why we are here today also and, and, and speaking to you, because it, it, it is about a call out from our side and saying that a dispute on the waterfront really has a significant overflow impact on, on Australia at large. And we, we have to admit that, that we are part of the cost of living issues and elements that we have at the moment. So when you take capacity out of the logistics chains, it is like anywhere else, you, you create bottlenecks, you create shortages, and you then consequently have increases in cost afterwards. And then that gets passed through from importers uh, into retailers and, and the end up into consumers. So, so, so that is probably also why we we feel it is a different industry than, than many other industries because the flow on effect on Australia when, when, when things are not working our industry is quite significant. Well, particularly when so many people are really struggling with uh, supply issues uh, even before this happened and to have so much uh, held up at the docks, this is, this is not good. Uh, now, you say you want Prime Minister Anthony Albanese or Industrial Relations Minister Tony Burke to ask the Fair Work Commission to step in and force both sides to make a deal. What response have you had from them? We, we haven't heard back. Um, and um, uh, I, I would like to think that those discussions are ongoing, um, both on a federal level, but also on a state level. Uh, state legislators also have the opportunity to step in and, and ask the Fair Work Co Commission to, uh, to get involved. Uh, and beyond just uh, hosting a, a sit down, but, but actually take an active role in, in reaching a compromise and, and getting a result. So um, at this stage, we haven't heard anything. Um, I, I can appreciate that nobody in Canberra and anywhere else would, would like to be told what to do. Um, and, and But we do hope and expect that there are someone stepping back and saying there is a bigger picture here. There is an Australian picture. There is a cost of living issue. There is a cost an issue about the branding and the competitiveness of Australia that we have to address um, and, and that can help us as the party to come to that resolution. Yeah, it's curious to me because the Fair Work, the Fair Work Commission's obviously uh, been long seen to be a little bit pro-union. Um, and if the case is as simple as the maritime workers say, that uh, they just want to be paid as much as Patrick's, as easy as that, you think they'd want to go to fair, fair Work. 
You want to go to fair work. The union doesn't. Why is that? Yeah, and I'm getting in again to a speculative, Frederick. I feel that that the case that we are bringing forward is that when it's presented to someone who looks at it objectively and look at the terms and conditions that we are looking to offer, but also to look at the about 300 claims from the union side um, and, and, and some of the, you know, it's not beyond reluctance, it's the refusal to actually have an agreement that reflects what customers in, in logistics need today and what is fair and reasonable. I, I think that I can only speculate that there is some underlying concerns within the unions saying, well, the things that they are asking for, if that is looked at objectively and, and in a neutral way and saying what is fair, then their claims actually will be knocked back. And, and some of the requests that we have about making an agreement that's reflective of logistics in 2024, in a 24-7 economy, then uh, that will actually be listened to. Nikolai Nuss, thank you so much indeed for your time. Thanks for having me, Andrew.